all very welcome. My name is Andrew Jennings. I'm going to give you an overview of BIM. Um, I'm from Artox, so my name is Andrew Jennings. I'm an architect. My father was a builder. Uh, my mum was an artist, so I implicated them by becoming an architect myself. Uh, and uh, obviously, like the last speaker, we, we find that things are, you know, datafied, digitized. So I've, I've exchanged my hard hat for a hard drive, so life is much easier for me anyway. So, I work for Artox, and in Artox we enable and we support BIM. Uh, we are consultants, we do training, support and production. And we have over 20 years of experience between the two directors. Seven years of BIM, 70 projects in BIM, and over 700 trained. It's just handy that it's all the sevens. Um, and Artox fit into that. So what is BIM? What, what why and how? BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. It's internationally known as Building Information Modeling. While here in Ireland we have Bordi Skwara, but it's nothing to do with that. Um, and I'm going to go through, as I say, what these, um, you know, how it's come about, because we have Building Information Modeling. But the thing is, I'd like to call it Building Information Management, because now that I know a lot more about how things are put together, um, that it is a lot about managing that information. So why has BIM come about? Why is this process, which it is, why are they looking for this process to be used in the way we get our buildings built? Well, it's because they're looking at challenges of construction to economic performance and quality and procurement issues. So BIM can positively impact on the above. So building information, uh, modeling as a process can uh, impact on these issues. Well, one of my jobs, the foremost job, was I was a, a contractor and uh, one of the things I kept on doing, as I say, would be uh, you know, working with solicitors and um, barristers, you know, not wanting to get, uh, unfortunately, sued, which we did. Um, so I would have thought that, as an architect or as a builder, I would have liked to have a better process in play. And BIM should have, could have saved me a bit of money at the time. But uh, we can solve problems by using the same kind of thinking that we use to create them. So, uh, you know, quite recently we had digitization of drawings through AutoCAD, but that doesn't really solve everything in terms of how we manage and exchange information. Now, information, what does it do? Well, uh, information describes what a building is, how it is constructed, how it's operated. And to do our job, and to do a good job, we need good information. Uh, and to make good decisions, we need good information at the right time as well. So we have um, the performance of a project team building is affected on how we create and manage exchange information. So that's what BIM is. It's about creating it, maybe as part of a model, uh, managing it of the information we put into that model and exchange it is what do we give out? Do we give out drawings? Do we give out models? And where do we share that? We share that on the cloud um, or simply by Dropbox or email. I think there's better ways of sharing the information. Because up to now, well, how has information been created? Well, it's been created by individual pieces of software looking at creating drawings, word creating specifications, production details and schedules, which would be Excel. And they would have all been, um, they would have been sort of manually coordinated, duplication of effort. We consider that there's a lot of abortive work and excessive checking. So prone to human error. Uh, this is labor intensive. Uh, costly and time consuming. We think that's problematic. So again, the BIM process is here to help manage building information. So why BIM? Again, another issue with the existing construction industry is we have multiple stakeholders with different uh, business interests and goals through the planning, design, construction and operation of a building. This is, you know, traditionally how they uh, communicate, you know, throwing information left and right uh, to each other. Again, with all these different, you know, reports produced in a complicated series of transactions. So what happens to this building information? Well, after you finish building a building, you should be expecting to get an O&M manual, which just tells you how the building was put together. Um, but this is problematic because it could be out-of-date information. Is the information reliable? Not so sure. And it could be unreliable information. Difficult to manage and maintain. And this is what you could end up with at the, you know, inside your building. And when I first saw this before I joined, or when I joined Artox, I thought they took a picture of one of the developments that we did. And we had this in triplicate. 
We had it in the basement, we had it in the office, and we had it with uh, property management companies. And if you start pulling out, you know, information, drawings, 2D drawings, data, and you start putting it in the wrong place, that is, you know, a, a sort of a, a way it used to be done. Now it's been digitized, yes, digitized, I've mentioned that, but what happens is they're still only creating folders of information that could be out of date. And how do you find that information? It's still, it's, it, it is a problem area. So what, there are better ways of doing things. Just about the construction industry for a second. Productivity in the construction industry has decreased uh, by 20% in the last 40 years. Where other industries have gone up by, what, 80, 90, 100% in productivity. And we're going down, we're still going down. So because we've failed as an industry to adopt and develop modern processes and technologies. So why BIM? Well, BIM is a new way of interacting with information as well. This, this, this slide here reminds me of two things. It's when you're booking a flight, you start putting the information in, you make sure you put in the details correctly because you're the one to get from A to B. And I think as a client or as a designer, as an engineer, you're an expert at what you do. You try and get the information in as, uh, as, as soon as possible, make it correct early on. And I think the BIM process can allow for that. And the other thing is, you don't know and you don't realize when you're putting your information that there's about 40 different software packages working in the background getting you from A to B, using the same information that you create. So when you, are, you, land, you land in your destination and it says your name, in my case, Andrew Jennings from Orbox maybe, um, you know, that is the information that I put in, that I can rely on, use. So, I mentioned about the stakeholders. We're not looking to get rid of any stakeholders. We want them to do the best that they can do. And what we want them to do is work around a vision of one, uh, you know, a vision of BIM is one building and uh, one database of information. So that is what we all operate around. And yes, we start planning, design, uh, contractors, and operators all working around this information, this BIM. Now this BIM would be a 3D model, that's one of the things. But this 3D model or this, this, this database of information can actually start at a much earlier stage. So when the client is engaging uh, the, the architects to get a building done, they may, uh, they may look at the resources that they have on site, you know, give the right information to the architect and say, you know, up to now, this is how we've worked the site or this is how other people to, you know, I think you might have heard other, other seminars talk about, you know, big, uh, uh, you know, the digital, uh, the internet of things and such, that you can, t you can tap into that. So BIM, one of the tools that BIM uses is, is uh, modeling. And one of the modeling uh, software packages could be Revit. And unlike AutoCAD, where you're dragging lines, and through your experience, you know that if two lines are beside each other, and they're on the outside of the building, that might be a wall. Here, they know they're a wall. They know the information in it. It's like a jigsaw. And you're creating a model. It's a one-to-one -one model of the building that you were going to get built. And you can have floors, building elements, pods, huge structural core elements, and even furniture and fitting all coming together to create the bin. So this is the bin. This is it. It's a 3D model. And with the 3D model, the bin, you then take the views to create the drawings, the sections, elevations, the details, and the schedules. And the great thing now here is you have one piece of software or other pieces of software all working together. For instance, Excel spreadsheets, schedules, you can push that information into the BIM. So if you had uh, information as to who, for instance, who and on what date Windows had gone into a project and you don't have the software, but you put it into an Excel spreadsheet and it will push it into the model. So all that information is recorded going forward. So up to now, uh, how the BIM process works is that, again, we go back to the stakeholders. We have the uh, stakeholders where they all create models, such as the site model. The client could create that. The architect, you have the structural and the services model. And then you have a 3D federated model, and it's a federated model that you can run sequencing, cost control, sustainability analysis, and feasibility analysis with the model. And that continues through the life of the building. And there's acronyms associated with uh, modeling, such as 3D coordinated, 4D sequencing, 5D, 6D, 7D, actually there's 89, it goes on up. 
what we're trying to do is, we're trying to also, during the design process, we're trying to shift effort from where we have design, documentation, to construction. Documentation normally following design. Well, in, you know, obviously things are very hard to control once we get from design to documentation to construction. It gets a lot more expensive to start making changes to drawings and information. But with the BIM process, we push that effort all into the design area. So that drawings and sheets and views, they're already set up. They're ready to, um, once you start populating the model uh, with information, uh, those, those sheets, those views are already as part of a template. So that's one way we push uh, documentation to design. The other thing is, with Revit, as one of the software tools, it's really easy to make those changes. Because if I take a, tr if I take a window out of a plan, I don't need to go into the section or the elevation to change that window, it automatically updates. Also in the schedule, they also update. So this is how BIM and Revit are working together. Up to now, the problem was, you know, you had designers going to contractors to operators, and there was a lot of a loss of information between each process. But now, I'm creating, as I showed you the image earlier on, unreliable information, where the BIM process you're digitally capturing all that information and storing it. And you can then look back at any stage to find out when decisions were being made um, as part of the design and building process. The other thing about the BIM process, it helps to attack waste uh, factor in construction. Uh, buildings are responsible for 50% uh, of CO2 emissions. So if you can do things more efficiently, such in, it's like in a lean way, you can attack, attack uh, waste. You know, because uh, the 30% cost of construction is waste through duplication of effort, uh, abortive work, disconnected workflows, coordination efforts, uh, errors even, and waste material, which is not that big, thank you. Now, the cumulative benefits of BIM. Uh, I'm gonna just jump straight down to one thing, the savings through class detection. When you have these models and you bring them together, a, a kind of traditional thing that you would have found on site is, you know, you go and someone has a beam in, steel beam in, and that's been, you know, that, that, that's in, and then you want to get a duct in, and you'll find that it's clashing. Well, all these clashes can be assessed much earlier on in the BIM, in the BIM, in the model. They can go and they can actually get software package that does that automatically, that analyzes you know, where clashes may be taking place between different places uh, of the building. So that's a huge saving area. So the significance of this reduction of costs. Um, if a building, if a building costs, let's say, 20 euros to build, you'd expect one euro of that would be designed. But during the operation phase, you know, that phase after where you have all those drawings stuck in, in boxes, there's 60% of the cost of the building goes in there. And that's where BIM, that whole BIM process is also about getting it, getting your buildings uh, managed correctly once you're using it. Now, if you can control, if you can control uh, all the things that affect quality, such as time, cost, and scope, uh, you know that uh, we have software packages that will communicate with the BIM to uh, control that. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk to you is what's happening over in the UK at the moment. The UK government strategy, they have mandated that BIM be used on all their buildings. So they have found, yes, there are savings in terms of cost of running the building. So that's 40 billion euros a year. So this is why you're going to see a lot more of BIM being uh, you know, used by contractors and designers over here is because they might be working in the English market because it's mandated. But the other thing is, because of the cost savings, the ability to create drawings quicker, to get you know, class detection during construction, or even to be able to manage your building in a better way, BIM in itself, you know, without mandating, it should be used. And there's a lot of good documentation in, in BIM. And one of the things is, we have a strategy in, in England, uh, which they talk about level two BIM. If that's something that you can always come back to, just be aware that there are standards the standards what we're advocating, certainly at our docs, that we use here in Ireland, is the same standard in England. And actually, we have members of our um, of our art docs on the European Commission saying that there should be a standard Europe-wide, and that's where we all want to get standardisation.
Now, here in Ireland, while we don't, we haven't mandated the use of uh, BIM, the four FOSS reports suggest and identifies BIM as bringing on competitiveness, innovation, off-site construction and lean construction. Off-site, if you can start relying on your model, and let's say for instance, I don't know if anyone's built a house recently, and you have to order windows when the opening is there. Well, no, not, not now, because if the openings are there, it's based on the BIM model, and you can get your windows manufactured uh, sooner, or a lot of things come and happen earlier. If you want to know more about BIM, you, I, we, I would recommend that you would uh, look at CETA, that's co co um, one of the organizations, it's a LinkedIn organization as well. Uh, CETA, they meet and they talk about BIM and they promote BIM. Uh, then there are Revit user groups, that's the software package. They also, uh, multidisciplinary communi community of BIM innovators, they meet informally. That's something I would also recommend to you to look at. And then obviously, uh, from our own point of view, our talks, we enable and support BIM. So what we do is, we can train, train you in the software packages and in the process. And then if that's something that your organization wants to adopt, we can then support you, get in there, do a little bit of production with you, and if it's something that you don't want to do, maybe you're, you, you're, you supply windows, we can actually make those models for you to give to architects, to give to contractors, so that they uh, can have that in the BIM. So that, I think, concludes my uh, just brief overview of BIM, and I hope you really, you've enjoyed it. I have some, uh, some leaflets up here if you want to learn some more. Thank you. Thank you.